thank you uh, for the this um, easy pass <laughs> to my presentation, which uh, deals with spaces, but is very much well actually starts a little bit further away uh, in the definition of digital work digital work sphere. Um, we uh, we talk about a lot, like everyone of us, I guess, in this in this call in this conversation about digital. But when we say digital, uh, many of us think of something like this something really interactive and really uh, magical somehow. But in fact, what I'll be talking about today are spaces such as this, which is a frictionless digital experience for professionals and personal growth, or this, which is a, a series of environments permeated by a digital platform that has the, me, the, 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 the will to change and nudge behaviors, or this, which is a touchless interactive customer center, or this, which is a space that knows exactly where you are all the time and what you want. So the thing that I, 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 I hope, I think you may think is why do these digital workplaces look so not digital? And the reason is that when we design digital experience, like said uh, also before, uh, technology, well, for us, technology is the last thing in our mind. We are uh, architects, we are designers, interior designers, and we are um, we we try to be good experience designers. We start from the experience in order to understand what kind of spaces are the best ones to answer the needs and the questions. So the point is, we try to uh, create engaging, frictionless experience, um, and the tools that they create them is really the last thing that we have in our mind. Also, because these were very very cool. Um, tech, very fancy tech once, and then were all uh, uh, substituted almost, or actually they, they almost disappeared under this really fan very fancy tech. And guess what? This very fancy tech is an iPhone 10, which is quite old now and has been substituted by this amazing iPhone 13 and so on and so on. So the point for us is that this device is our starting point because this device represents what digital is in our existence apart from from the the working spaces and this is very crucial because it's the is the icon is the li living proof of the fact that tech is a bare mean to actually user satisfaction and user experience and in fact it's very much relatable to this other device uh, which is a uh, uh, I mean, the reason why this, this connection is, is quite clear is that uh, if we think of handling our phone and our pin to someone, I don't know, to someone, to a passerby that we have uh, besides us now, this provokes some strong feelings. Like um, uh, we, we get uncomfortable, we get sad, we, get, we feel new, we, we get also scared sometimes for what our device may, content, may, may, may contain. And this is because the device follows us everywhere, listens to anything, reads everything, sees all the images, and knows basically everything, and knows us much better than any other person that we have in our life. So uh, we can say with a certain with a with certainty that workplace is not a place with tools and tech supporting tasks, but workplace is people feeling good in these places while performing the tasks feeling good emotionally, rationally, physically. So the beginning of our thinking is, uh, is the, this banal, I guess, for, for almost every one of us, uh, the Maslow pyramid of needs, pyramid of needs, which starts from the very basic needs and gets to the very more, more elaborated, complex and cultural needs. And uh, this brings us to, to think like a UX designer, asking ourselves, what should my, my feeler, my, my, um, my customer, my users feel? What should they think? What should they do? Why? How do, should they feel in relation to the others? So if we as architects and interior designers uh, are of course uh, dealing with architecture, interior design and graphic design, we now need to deal also with experience design and interaction design and behavioral sciences. So it's very connected to, to what was said uh, till now. So. This is why we, Prisma, our payoff is design human life, which is a little bit ambitious as a statement, but describes well this thing that I'm trying to, to convey. Um, in particular, works, the WorkSphere Business Unit deals with 
uh, having user get engaged while performing work in the spaces of work. And this brings us to a little story, which uh, I wanted to start from the beginning, let's say 10 years uh, ago, 10 years before pandemics. So there once was the workplace, the only child of a, like a pampered only child that always got what he wanted, employees. But then after like five years, time have changed and the child got some siblings and they started to pop up everywhere like hell and the workplace become just one of the many places where to go. And this family was called, has a name as all families and it's called WorkSphere. But then COVID arrived and the family balance again was disrupted for, by, a, by a big disruption and one sibling became the star of this family. Of course, the name of the sibling was home and even though not everyone loved it so much for working, let's say it, it, it received some helps from, from governments, from the World Health Organization. We were forced to stay home. And the workplace suffered a lot. But now today, things really can change again because we are uh, again allowed to get out from our homes and get somewhere else to work. But now um, the, the workplace has a big opportunity, but also, uh, has to be um, has to be ready to, to 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 get the challenge and to overcome the challenge, because now everyone is thinking this: Why the hell should I go back to the office when I can go anywhere? Because digitality, the digital work, uh, ha allows us to work from everywhere, basically, potentially. So why should I go back? Well, in fact, going like concrete and and tangible, tangible. The question is, what experience for us as designers, what experience will the people demand if they, uh, let's say, allow, uh, allow themselves to go back to the office? So there are, of course, many, many uh, surveys that have, been, that have been done in, this, in, this, in these years, uh, like EY showed us, uh, but also the Observatory of the Smart Working uh, shows us how uh, like uh, companies, big enterprises, and employees responded, answered to this question, which is why should you why should you go back to the office? And uh, big enterprises answered for to promote a sense of belonging, to foster socialization, to support collaboration, to soothe people's stress, and to get more uh, better communication. And employees share uh, many of these aspects, like socializing, collaborating, meeting people, but also they they focus also on recruiting and onboarding those. Um, let's say delicate experiences that really make the difference when we are in place and make the difference if they are made in physical presence. Also training and education and confronting during this growing path that we have to, to deal with is very uh, differentiating in the experience that we can have in, the, in our activities if they are, we are together in a place that is uh, branded or alone in our scattered out in different places. And in fact, many people said that they would go back to the office also all the time or even uh, or, or, or just some days, uh, some some days during the week. But very few of them said they would stay home forever now that they have the opportunity to, to go back. So we elaborated a series, drive, a series of drivers that allow us to think, rethink the, the office. And these are the drivers. Digital, uh, the office has to be a digital, digital and hybrid um, place that allows many ways of working and personalized ways of working. And also a, a strong connection, a seamless connection with people who are not there with you. The new footprint is, means that a space has to change. According to what I just said, a change is destination. Desks will have less importance and support and branded spaces much more importance, but not because uh, it, w it doesn't have to be a, a mechanism that is a top-down decision, but it's something that is clear if you try to live and to, and to experience the, the new office. Safety and sustainability has become a, a, um, a, an absolute need because every one of us needs to be reassured of safety and sustainability, especially of safety. Uh, and uh, more than, I mean, of course, the place has to be safe, and, and sustainable, but more than that, also it has to be reassure us that there is a care upon these topics. And lastly, the brand dialogue is something that means that this, the space is a brand leverage, is a marketing leverage, and it has to communicate on the language of their 
uh, of its users, of the employees, of the st all the stakeholder stakeholders that get in touch with it, but according to the company values. So there is this balance, which is hard to, to, to keep, but it's fundamental in order to have a successful workplace. So just going deep in this, but not um, trying not to get to, to bore you, uh, I would just wanted to see that uh, in all these steps, in all these drivers, um, digitality and platforms and, and uh, uh, hardware and software play a crucial role. For instance, in, uh, to create a digital and hybrid uh, experience in, in the workplace, there are a lot of things that were already there in place, but now has been potentiated, like booking systems, hybrid collaboration, the bring your own device policy, the indoor navigation solutions, a space analytics and the importance of space analy analytics for the managers, but also for the employees themselves. And uh, basically this social platform that connects most of the things that mo most of the other services into one, uh, one um, let's say, DNA, uh, company DNA centered uh, application. And in this kind of workplace, we imagine that basically there is a kind of framework like this where datification lays in the middle of a four uh, axis scheme where individual and community are two uh, points of view of the same experience and simplifying and enhancing are two actions that technology deals with and can, uh, can support with. The, um, in, in the workplace, uh, in the work experience. The office does, thus becomes an ecosystem, but also a place, like I said before, in the work sphere. So a node of a work sphere, which is basically what, uh, what uh, the Wave Center, as I understood it, is like. So uh, for instance, a very important thing is uh, the, the, the understanding if you want all nodes to be the same and give you exactly the same experience in order to create this familiarity sense, or instead getting differentiated one to the other in order for you to have people walking uh, and, and visiting different spaces according to their needs of the moment, their, their um, wills, and their um, uh, will also to go to a certain area of the city or a certain city or a certain, a certain country for a certain reason. Talking about a new footprint, basically what happens is that in the uh, like uh, the 10 years ago, as I said before, uh, 10 years ago, the, the, the workspace was divided into 60%, about 60% of desk space and 40% of workspace. And now it has, it has changed a lot. Uh, the space for desks uh, was, um, became much less. And there was a, a, a different approach to the support spaces and also the creation of new space that can be used to, uh, to have a return on investment and economical return, but also to create different spaces and moments of truth of the relationship between the users and the company. In terms of safety and sustainability, we have, of course, a very important uh, a series of important um, actions that uh, have been asked in the design of, of the offices. Uh, there are certification, but apart from that, well, everyone now asks or is interested in sanifiable uh, materials and wants to, uh, to create, to foster respectful behaviors because responsibility is a great task according to um, talking about um, relations and talking about social psychology. Uh, the, the, the responsibility that each of us has when goes around and when gets to a place that is shared with other people is a very different uh, perspective that we have to deal with when, when imagining the new offices. And of course, touchless interactions are also very important, which is looks like maybe banal, but it's not that uh, much so because we were just starting to use a lot of interactive touch uh, screens, touch uh, devices. And now we have to uh, skip again into like towards uh, uh, another step of this evolution. But also safety and sustainability is also a cultural approach that, that companies can have if they, um, let's say, get to meet the people before they get into the spaces, in the workspaces. And for instance, talking and dealing with their um, habits of mobility which can be supported in terms of electric and human powered mobility and can really foster a culture that gives everyone, uh, enriches everyone in the, in the uh, shared culture that they will uh, have in the, in the company and with colleagues and with the brand. 
And lately, lastly, sorry, lastly, uh, talking about the brand, the brand dialogue, as I said, the space is a market leverage for companies to talk and to have a discussion, an open or, or more or less open, it depends on the, on the DNA of the company, um, the dialogue with, with its stakeholders. But has we individuated four steps, which can be uh, described like this, like the showing moment, the activation of emotions moment, the generation of a sense of belonging and engagement, and the fostering of new behaviors. These can be like four steps that company can try to, let's say, uh, endorse and, and, and uh, act upon when dialoguing with their, with their uh, stakeholders. And of course, uh, the first moment, the first, we say the first three minutes of contact are crucial to create and psychology, the psychologist in this call will, will uh, could uh, probably explain it much better than me. But the first impression is very, very important to set your bias, your biases are, um, towards you and towards anything that you will see and experience uh, after that. So here you see like some examples, for instance, uh, up uh, left uh, corner, Econocom, uh, this space is uh, like a showroom. This, sca this, this uh, stairs is made of LEDs that can change color and, and convey messages. But also here you have a self check-in. There, there are no people helping you. Well, I mean, helping, yes, but no people that have to perform the check-in, but people to offer you the human part of this digital uh, experience, which is offering you a coffee and, and uh, staying with you while you wait for your, get, for your host to get, uh, to get you. So Jenny is, a, is another example. There, this is called a non-reception welcome area. You get here, you, there, is, there are people working and you can talk with uh, whomever is here and is at your disposal. And Aeon instead is in this place, mm, not necessarily um, digital or particularly digital, but very punchily branded. And these are uh, moments of truth that really can set, as you can see from the difference from these different companies. Econocom is a, is a digital integrator, Sorgenia is an energy provider, and Aeon is an insurance company. Uh, the very difference uh, of, uh, of first impact. So to go back to the beginning, those uh, four non-digital, non-digital, uh, no, non-digital uh, pictures that I showed you, Let's see where they fit in the digital experience that these four companies wanted to give to their, uh, to their um, customers. So we start with Feed. Feed is not a space, it's a platform. Feed existed in, as a digital platform and now it exists as a physical part of this platform, of this digital platform. This is a, a platform for growth uh, and purpose creation and uh, basically helps you uh, grow your employability. For those of you who are not familiar with this term, it means the chance of being employed by the market. And so it's very related to what was said before also. Um, what you do in this space is tracked in your, in your app, in your, uh, by your digital avatar and shown in a gamified way. So you are in, uh, encouraged to go on. Also, this is because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's um, like, um, evident to everyone that many, many, many of the MOOCs, the, the online courses that we try to, uh, to, to do and follow, basically we abandon. And as this is a, is a, is a digital platform that starts from the, from the digital um, uh, environment, this aspect was very important because you are quite independent in this process of growing or growth. There are no like people which uh, follows you from the beginning to the end. You skip from meeting different people in each different situations according to the, the moment in which you are in your adventure. And the first moment, uh, the, the, the entrance of this space is that that you see on the right, uh, uh, bottom right and up uh, upper uh, corner, which is called the edge, the edge from the outside world and to the inside world, which is this digital experience that you will, uh, will live in this area, this edge part is permeated by two kinds of uh, um, sensorial approaches. One rational with information about what happens inside and why it could fit with your uh, needs. And one emotional with voices that talks about uh, previous experiences of previous users and problems that deal with your, try to create, to create empathy with you that probably when you get here are quite scared or maybe not, uh, not very at ease or, uh, at least you want to challenge yourself so you're not in your comfort zone. 
And this way, this way of approaching you with a color, with colors and colored uh, changing LEDs and uh, voices tries to deal with this kind of very personal and, and emotional aspects. Inside, what you get is the opposite of what is digital. As you can see, it's very hard to spot digital hardware. You can see just a couple of monitors, but basically the space is all digital, is all full of, um, of um, let's say, activators of digital experiences. In the capsule that you see up, uh, up here, you can uh, deal with uh, an online mentor or you can uh, uh, a remote mentor, but you can also have a self-assessment with a VR um, headset just alone with that, uh, that uh, collects a lot of information about you and put them on your avatar on the, on the platform. In the, uh, in the second, in the, in the bottom left corner, you can see what we call the forge, where you forge your skills and you have the proper uh, lessons and appointment with coaches, and you really have the core of your educational uh, process and adventure. And on the, rep, on, the, on the right side, you have the arena, the arena where you uh, are able to fight with your, with your tools, with your um, arms and what, with what you learned. So this all experience, we imagine it as a, an adventure ex experience where the adventure is basically you and your growth. Going back to the to Econocom that I showed you previously, the, the check-in is already explained, the, the, the welcome area is already explained, but you must know that this is a, an office that is also considered used as a showroom. So it, it, there are a lot of visits during the day, every day of, of the year. This space tracks you everywhere you are. And when you are, uh, for instance, uh, when you're habilitated or you are an employee, you just get you, get, you, you walk uh, towards a door which is locked and the door opens for you, not because there is a sensor, but because you're allowed to go in. So it reads your NFT that you have on your, on your uh, badge, for instance. Once you get in, your badge and your personal device are tracked. And this if, so, can like, feel like, sound a little bit weird, but it was all decided by the inhabitants. It was uh, uh, their big uh, scope, their big goal they had with this project. And it's very useful for security, for relationships, I mean, relationship-wise, because it allows you, for instance, to meet colleagues if they give you access to their position in the village. This is not a like a uh, one-floor uh, environment. It's a um, pretty complex village of different environments that are scattered around an area together with uh, um, also other companies. So it's, it's quite complex. So the the location, inter internal location uh, um, service is quite important, quite useful for everyone. Also, meeting rooms recognize you and activate the content that you decided and turns on and off and, and communicate with you when you are uh, close to the end of, the, of, the, of, your, of your scheduled uh, spot or if you want to, to um, like book further uh, hours in the scheduled spot. The vending machines, too dialogue with you, recognize you, suggest you your desired snack. I mean, it can be seen a little bit uh, in, a, in a scary way, but this was all uh, decided and suggested by the population because they are digital integrators and basically they are experimenting what they sell to their uh, customers. And also because they have uh, environments that, that are dedicated to outsiders. There are uh, a co-working space, there is, there is um, desk sharing and room sharing area, all uh, bookable, but all without any uh, like tablets, uh, check-in tablets, but QR codes. And here it's interesting how the, the uh, shades of decisions of the interaction that users can have with this kind of services is very important because it makes a big difference uh, for, for the, the perception, the final perception that we have. Another, uh, the, the third project that I want to show you is this. This is a, uh, it's called the Tag Hub. It's from Bain and Company. And what they do here is sharing contents and uh, uh, consultancy. But they had this, uh, let's say, uh, challenge they wanted to, to, um, to work with together with us. And they said, uh, we want to show our normal contents, but we want to have people uh, remember that they saw these contents. They, want to remember, they, they wanted people to, the users and, and clients to remember how cool the experience was. 
So what we did was not just filling the space with digital, but instead like creating little uh, interventions that could really make the difference. For instance, this uh, environment you see that looks maybe a lot digital is in fact very simple, is LED lights, strip lights, and plexiglass. And one sensor, the one that you have in the bathroom when you have the light turning on. So it's very simple, but creates, creates this sense of being received and being um, like, and, 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 and of a starting dialogue that the company wants to have with you when you get in. And all these uh, sects uh, gets uh, enlightened uh, as long as you uh, walk through with them. The space, which is the one that I showed you before, this on the, on the bottom uh, right corner, is a space, is a very interactive space. But the point is that on this corner, the, the, this, uh, this one that I showed you before, you have uh, AR, an AR content uh, branded wall. This, the magic here is that it's very hard to see a retro lit lighted um, wall that is also a, an, uh, an augmented reality wall that can communicate uh, different stuff. And this wall uh, is very, is very uh, I mean, very uh, useful and interesting for them, for the company, for Bain, because can also just be used as a normal wall. On the other side, you have huge screens, like 98 uh, inches screens, but instead of interaction by touching it, instead of um, uh, touch screens, we uh, decided to um, create a touchless interaction because the period is delicate and also because there is this technology which is very banal, which is the Kinect te technology, the, the Wii technology that we all know, that is never used in, in working spaces. And why not? For probably mm, reasons of, of uh, um, preciseness and of uh, also the fact that all the interfaces are developed for touching the screen. In fact, what we did is developing, was developing another kind of interface. And that was a fundamental part in the user experience um, design because otherwise it would have been very hard to interact with the screen with an old kind of uh, user interfa interface, but a new kind of uh, interaction, imagine. So the, it was very important for us to uh, make a couple of steps towards another discipline, which is not the, of course, the, not the architectural discipline, but now becomes more and more and more important for us to understand and to be able to deal with. Last project I wanted to show you was Aeon, is Aeon. Aeon uh, has eight floors and in, in these eight floors to manage all the spaces and, <coughs> sorry, in, the, in, the, in these floors, but also in the parking lots, you have one app, a classical uh, booking app. But what they did was, okay, with this app, we have a lot of book, a lot of, of information, a lot of data, a lot of information about um, people needs and people um, uh, choices. What can we do with them? What, how can we do, how can we give them a, a positive value for the company culture and for the people living it? What we did together, together with them was uh, to create a gamif gamified experience that brought people to have to change their behaviors and create virtuous behaviors. So everyone, according to their uh, level, to their hierarchical, uh, hierarchical level, they have different um, uh, advantages, advan advantages of booking in rooms, in, in private offices, in collaboration rooms, in parking lots, but they can decide whether to use them or give them to someone else. And by giving them to someone else, they gain points and they gain let's say uh, other, uh, like let's say coins or points that can be spent in order to gain other services and to access to other services. And this way we try, we intend, and we'll see how it works, how it will work. Uh, we intend to create, um, um, let's say, uh, responsibility, responsibilization and a, and a, and a commune and, and shared culture that people can, um, can learn and share but around the company culture and brand DNA. And this was the, 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 the reason why I decided to show you this space, which in fact one could say is just a booking app. Well, it's not, it's a, it's a very, um, uh, let's say ambitious uh, exper ex experiment of uh, changing behavior of a, of a population. 
So just to end, and that's the end, uh, as you could, could see, digital spaces can be very different and can respond to very different goals and can be used to give happiness, surprise, change behaviors, engage, augment relational experience, and so on. And finally, whether is the objective, the, the, they are success, successful when they finally give you a return on investment, both on human and economical capital. And that's about it.